It's been a year with my AE30, and I wanted to update my six-month report. From day one, my thoughts were, why can't the area phone be more like the instrument I'm used to? Over time, I did learn it could be made to conform closer to my expectations. But the real lesson was to play the AE30 on its own terms and try not to make it an almost version of something else. My biggest hurdle was to find the best way to use the keyboard, especially with the challenge of effectively using the thumb pad. I had two critical decisions to make. First was to decide to use on which fingering systems to use, and second was to sit or stand while playing. So what system or fingering did I use? I settled on a modified E-Wind fingering system. There are two reasons. First, I was able to add alternative fingerings that are logical extensions of often used note sequences. Using modifiers assigned to the pinky keys, these guys, that raise and lower the main note by a half or a whole step. So without getting too far into the weeds, I'll talk about the note C5. It's the C, the third space on the treble clef. And I'm here showing six fingerings that I use. In fact, I surprised myself that I used fing six fingerings for the C5. I don't think of it as though six fingerings to learn. But for example, if I'm on B natural and I have to go to C, so this B natural, I will use one of these the program keys to raise it by a half a step. These alternative fingerings help with tricky chromatic sequences and provides options for going over the break, you know, the thumb break. Also, alternative fingerings offer choices that reduce the number of fingers needed to play difficult passages. This frees up easy to reach keys to be assigned for other functions, and that will be discussed later. The second decision I made was to sit or stand while playing. I usually sit now, even though I actually prefer standing. And sitting allows me to take the weight off my right thumb by resting the AE30 on a chair. And instead of using the thumb rest as a major weight bearing support, the thumb rest is more now of a reference point that helps stabilize the instrument and allows greater access to the thumb pad and lever. I use the thumb pad to modify the patch being played. For example, I use the thumb pad to switch in pizzicato while playing the violin patch. And one of the things I use the thumb lever for is that I dynamically change the rate of vibrato while playing. Okay, I mentioned about the side keys. The right side keys are used to select the harmonies that I want to play. So I can change them up and down depending on the interval I want to hear. And if, actually, if the harmonies change too fast for me to use a key, I push the harmonies to MIDI changes. So I'll have the computer push up the changes for me. I use this left key here to actually play the harmony. So one will select it and the other one will play it for it. There are a couple of design features for the Aerophone that initially confused me and I eventually learned to see where Roland was heading. One of them is the wings on the instrument. And also the, the clicking keys. I used to think the wings were just decorative, and they are not. The side wings give you something to hold on to and help keep the instrument level and the keys underneath your fingers. So it's actually, you know, designed as a grip. I also listened to a bunch of Aerophone YouTube reviews. A lot complained about the clicking keys. Apparently, Roland also listened to, to the, the, the uh, YouTube videos. And the latest model has quieter keys. 
but frankly, I see why Roland made clicking keys. The mechanism that clicks also provides some tactile feedback. As I started this video saying, a common theme is that the aerophone should be more like the instruments we are used to playing. But the aerophone is complex, and Roland did their homework. They made a feature-rich product that could be configured to meet a large number of needs. And if you're not interested in the flexibility that the thumb pad or MIDI um, has in the AE30, there's always the AE20. They don't have those options. This first year with the AE30 was spent learning how to benefit from Roland's designs, but there's still a great deal to learn. So keep playing. Thanks very much for listening.